Okay, so here we are, second part. Um, engine's out. Um, I mean, it really wasn't that bad or anything. Um, then we're gonna, all that's really left to do now is take all the accessories off. I mean, I don't really have to go through step by step with every single thing that needs to come off. Just start taking it off, stripping it down. There's really no instructions for that. And then once we get to the part where engine has to, heads come off, that kind of stuff, then uh, that's gonna be a bit different. But uh, start by just taking the cams, uh, the timing belt and all that stuff off, and then just intake and all that kind of stuff and just pull it all apart one by one and then just start taking the block apart once she's all stripped. That's really all there is to it. So I'm gonna get started and uh, this is new to me, so should be fun. It's about to go ahead and do some breaks about here. Like today, please, if you're good to go, come on. Like you want to pose it in the Only for three days later. Here, so Why is this pipe leaking? I put this on specific. Ow! <laughs> that was amazing. But I'm trying to take it off. There's one more here. I think. Oh no, no, that's okay. I got it, John. So now that you got the engine all out and stuff, um, for demonstration purposes, I already took everything off, but to make for the sake of the video easier, um, I kind of put everything back together loosely as, it, as it's supposed to sit. So the first thing you want to do, um, take off the turbo. Uh, that's pretty simple. It's just right on the back here. And then basically take off all the little brackets and stuff that is obviously gonna kind of hold you up or whatever. And then the intake actually comes off all as one piece. So there's these little bolts here. They use a 12 mil socket and there's one here and two in between the intake runners and then one on the back. These are what they look like like this. So each side has one, two, three, four bolts. Um, don't undo the ones that have a 10 millimeter head on them. You don't need to do that. You're taking off the TGV valves um, and then it all comes off as one. Uh, make sure your harness isn't gonna catch on anything. Disconnect wires and things like that. Um, and yeah, you don't have to worry about fuel rail or anything that all comes out as one unit. So uh, I think there might be a couple little brackets. I don't have them on right now. Um, 
but this is what it looks like when it comes off as one, just like this. So now that you got that out of the way, there is going to be a tube. It's gonna be some hoses for your PCB system that you'll need to disconnect first, or you can take it off with it. This is what it looks like. It goes right here. And then after that, you take this. This is your PCB system from the valve covers. Remove that. Underneath that will be your coolant crossover tube. Uh, just connects the two coolant jackets together. Remove that. And then your EGR system. And I would recommend just deleting this whole thing, which is what I'm gonna do. And you would just pull that off and move that off to the side. And just make sure you close off all your ports so you don't get dirt in them and take off anything else that might be in the way. Uh, yeah, so something really weird about this. Uh, cam gears. Apparently you can't get them off unless you uh, drill them out. And they even have pilot holes in the middle of them. Um, apparently a bunch of people I know that have taken a few of these apart say that they are on so tight, they're under so much tension that even like a half inch impact or a big breaker bar, they still couldn't break them free. But after they drilled out the middle of them, uh, they just came off super easy. So kind of weird. I don't know why the hell they do it like that. Apparently even the guys that work at Subaru do it like this as well. So um, I guess that's how I'm gonna have to do it. So I'll demonstrate it, but it's pretty crazy concept to me even, so. Hopefully I don't screw anything up, but I guess that's apparently how you do it. And I'll show you how to do it, so we should be fine. Okay, heads off on both sides. Um, other side looks good. You can see that this side definitely, this is the cylinder that gave me issues. 
crosshatch is still there. There's no marks on the cylinder walls. Pretty impressed. So I might even get away with not even having to hone this thing. Well, hone it, but not bore it out to bigger size or anything. Like there's really no marks on the cylinder walls. I looked at the head too. It doesn't look like the valves are bent or anything. But you can definitely see all the other cylinders look like this. Kind of black, have some carbon on them, which is pretty surprising because I drove this thing pretty fucking hard. But this one, it's all clean over there, like it got hot. It was always running over there nice and warm. So I'm guessing that's where the damage is going to be. I'm not going to uh, pull that tonight, but I'm going to do it at some point. Um, I got to go back to work, so. But that's it. The block is all stripped down. And then uh, when I get another moment, I'll uh, pull the pistons. I think that'll be the next video. This one will just be stripped down. And then the next video will be um, basically splitting the block, pulling the pistons. Because that's kind of a big process itself. I've seen other videos where people do that. And uh, word of caution when you're pulling your heads, make sure they're upright. Because all of your, um, oh, what's it called? Do you want all of your um, shims or whatever sits on top of the valves? They'll fall out if it's uh, sitting sideways. So, yeah, that's basically it. So, that's the end of that. And next video is going to be how to pull the pistons out, split the block, and do all that stuff. And then maybe one day we'll get to reassembly but we can only hope. And try to keep your parts organized. This looks kind of like a mess, but it's an organized mess. It could be a lot worse. But thanks for watching.